Yo, what's going on guys? It's Houston Sports Talk back in the video today. And today we're going to be talking about the Houston Rockets potentially trading for Harrison Barnes, NBA veteran. This is actually one of the first videos I've done throughout the trade deadline talking about the Rockets potentially trading for a player. I haven't talked about uh, the Rockets potentially trading in a player in probably weeks. Uh, but now that we're a couple weeks away from the trade deadline, it's January 17th. Uh, you got two more weeks of January and then the trade deadline's on the 8th, so a little bit, almost almost three weeks away. Tomorrow will be three weeks from the trade deadline. So now that we're three weeks away from the trade deadline, I'm going to try to do more content for the trade deadline throughout the whole NBA, but more importantly, uh, to talk about the Rockets and potential moves for the Rockets to make. And reason I am talking about Harrison Barnes and the Rockets potentially trading for Harrison Barnes is because yesterday was reported that the Rockets are interested in Harrison Barnes and would like to potentially trade for them. Uh, trade for him, my bad. Uh, Barnes, who's played in 40 games this year with 40 starts and 29.3 minutes per game, and has averaged 10.8 points per game. And it's been a career, uh, a career down year for him. Uh, not a career low, although this is a career low, and he has not gone this low with points per game in a while. The, low, the last time he was this low was his third season in the NBA, uh, 2014-15 season with Golden State with 10.1 points per game. Right now he's at 10.8. He's averaging three rebounds per game with one assist per game, nearly one steal per game as well. But from three, he's shooting the ball really well, nearly 40% at 39.7. His field goal percentage is 47.4. His free throw percentage this year is 80.5. So he's having a he's having a good year, even though it is not as good as it's been in the past couple years with the Kings. 2022-23 season, 15 points per game. 2021-22 season, 16.4. 2020-21 season, 16.1. So you sure it's not the same thing it's been for him and the Kings. But uh, I think a, a you know part of it is he's aging, and another part is I th I believe Keegan Murray, the second year player, has has developed a better role, taking more shots and scoring way more than he has in the past, and I think that's been a big reason and why um, his minutes have you know uh, that's a big reason why his points have gone down, but also his minutes have gone down, and that's another reason why you've seen his points go down. Uh, his minutes have gone down by uh, over three minutes per game. Last year, he averaged 32.5 minutes per game, and now he's, this year he's averaged 29.3. So that's another reason why. Um, let's talk about a trade that I have the Rockets doing to get Harrison Barnes and another player. The Rockets would trade for Harrison Barnes and Davion Mitchell, a guard, uh, point guard slash shooting guard, which I would like, I actually would like on the Rockets, although. They already have some guard talent with the men Thompson and uh, Aaron Holiday. I think Mitchell would be a good addition. Obviously, the big addition is Harrison Barnes, and the Rockets would trade away Jay Sean Tate, Victor Olandipo, Reggie Bullock Jr., a 2024 second round pick, which belongs to Golden State. It is uh, protected, though, 56 through 59, but the, the, that pick's going to be better than that. The Warriors are not going to finish as a as a top team in the NBA. Um, at least I think they won't. That they're they might be able to make a comeback yet to get into the playoffs, but they're not going to. Their 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 draft pick is not going to be fifty six to fifty nine, which is at the end of the second round. And the teams that are at the end of the second round are usually the teams that have the best record in the league. You're looking at the 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 top four best records in the league. I think the Warriors can turn things around. Actually, one of their assistant coaches just passed away today, which is a tough blow for the team. RIP. I I forgot his name, which is terrible, but uh, that's gonna be hard for them. I just had to. I just have to assume that's gonna be a really tough loss for them and to go on and play um, with a loss of a coach. But still, they're not gonna be able to turn things around to the point where they're a top four. You know, they're not where they're a top four record in the NBA. They can definitely turn things around, but they're not going to turn things around that way. So the, the, if the Kings, if the Kings, if we trade that pick to the Kings, they're going to get to keep the pick. The Warriors are not going to get that pick back. At least that's what it's looking like right now. Also, we would send a 2025 first-round pick 
uh, which belongs to us. I have no problem at all trading away our 2025 first round pick. On the other end, I do have a problem with us trading away any Brooklyn Nets draft picks. Do not give away any Brooklyn Nets draft picks. Although a 2025 first round pick that belongs to us, I don't have any problem giving away a first round pick that belongs to us because I think if, if we're doing as good as we've done this season, we're 19 and 20. I know that's that's mid, but I don't know how things finish us for us this season, but I know things will get better next season. Um, the Rockets will make moves to improve. Their younger guys will get better. So the Rockets will be better, and they will continue to try to compete. So it's not like they're going to be in tanking mode. So that first-round pick, it might not be terrible, but it's not going to be amazing. I think that first-round pick, if, the, if we decide to trade it away in two, the 2025 first-round pick, it's going to be probably right in the middle uh, of the first round, which I, I'm fine. I'm fine trading away a mid-draft pick in the first round. Uh, I think we have so much talent already. We don't need any more talent. We can get some win-now help in Harrison Barnes and Davion Mitchell. I don't know how much Davion Mitchell will do, but Harrison Barnes can come in and – uh, would help would help us. Uh, I don't know what his role would be. Would he be the sixth man, or would he even start? If Jalen, I th- I think the good thing about Har- bringing Harrison Harrison Barnes in, it gives Ime Yadoka the option to the point where, if you know, if Jalen Green continues to struggle as bad as he has done this season, he has a guy where he can put in to start at that small forward position, and the Rockets can have a really nice starting lineup of Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, Harrison Barnes, Jabari Smith Jr., and Alpron Sangoon if Jalen Green's struggles continue, which would be great for, for the Rockets because I think a starting lineup, like, if you, if you, if you bench Jalen Green, for instance, you bench Jalen Green uh, and with, you know, do that without, um, sorry, if you, if, you ma- if you make that move, benching Jalen, and it is done, uh, and and you do not, you do not do this trade. Who's going to start? Tari Eason? I don't think so because I think the Rockets have found him. The Rockets have found a great role for him as the sixth man. So I don't see Tari Eason coming in to to start. Jay Sean Tate, who who's in this trade, I I don't I don't really get a good vibe from him starting. Yes, he's a good defensive player. Yes, he's a good rebounder, but uh, he's not a good scorer. He's not a good three point shooter. Which Harrison Barnes are, are you know he's those he's those two things right there. Um, who's who's else on the board? Cam Whitmore, I trust him, but he's young. He, he he makes some mistakes sometimes. I think we are competing, and and honestly, as much as I love Cam Whitmore, I don't think he's ready for that starting position just yet. And I think we'd probably be better off starting Jalen Green. So I think Harrison Barnes. I'm not saying he's going to come in and he's going to he's going to start over Jalen, but. I think he is a good replacement if Ime ever decides to bench uh, Jalen, and he brings attributes that the Rockets love: three point, good three point shooting, good defense, which are two things I think the Rockets uh, love to have and would like to improve on. And honestly, if the Kings would do this trade, trading away Harrison Barnes, who's having a down year, and Davion Mitchell, who's who's also also is having a down year. And getting back some nice players like Jay Sean Tate, Victor Oladipo, Reggie Bullock Jr. I don't know how much they like the player value. I think they like getting Jay Sean Tate as well. That's one thing. I think they like to acquire Jay Sean Tate. Um, I don't know how they feel about Victor Oladipo. He hasn't played this season, but I think they would like him as well. Reggie Bullock Jr. I don't think he's going to do much for them. But the draft picks as well. Getting that first round pick, a first round pick that they can keep or move elsewhere. I don't know what the Kings would do. Barnes is a free agent as well. You get to get rid of an expiring contract in Barnes, and you know you you also uh, get a give away Davion Mitchell, and you get a first back. You also get Jayshon Tate, who's a good rebounder and a good uh, and a good defender, and then some other players as well. I don't know if it's a deal the Kings would do, but I think it's a deal they would for sure consider. And if they can't get anything else better for Harrison Barnes, I think they'd definitely consider doing it and possibly doing it with the Rockets. Some of your thoughts on the potential trade in the comment section. And peace out. Go Rockets.